stars, one of the most abundant fiery engines of the universe. These colossal spheres of burning gas captivate the curiosity of many. In this video, we'll be covering not only how these mesmerizing entities form, but their vital importance to the cosmos we know today. So let's start at the beginning of the life cycle of all stars. Throughout our universe, matter and energy is scattered everywhere, often in the form of clouds of dust and gas called nebulae. These nebulae hold a small yet non-negligible amount of mass and therefore gravitational field. With random movements and clumpings through a phenomenon called turbulence, deep within these clumps of matter, eventually these nebulae become more and more massive. Depending on how much matter is gathered within this nebula phase of a star will ultimately determine the future mass of the star, to which the larger a star's mass is, the shorter its life cycle will be. But, returning back to our nebulae, after they have acquired a sufficient amount of mass, these clumps begin to collapse under their own gravitational fields, causing the matter within to become denser and heat up. This forms what we know to be a protostar, a protostar has a stellar core full of dense, heated up material that is pushing against the further gravitational collapse. Surrounding this core though is a circumstellar disk of additional spiraling material. Some of this swirling material spirals inwards towards the stellar core, while the rest spirals in place around the core. It is when the surrounding material stops spiraling inwards though when the protostar becomes a Titari star. In this phase, a Titari star ceases to have material fall onto what was previously known as a protostar. Although Titari stars aren't yet hot enough to support nuclear fusion at its core, the star is still releasing a tremendous amount of energy. Typically, this phase only lasts for a hundred million years, leading to a fork in the road of this life cycle of stars. Next in our journey, Stars advance to their main sequence phase, which we are most familiar with, as our Sun has been a main sequence star for approximately 5 billion years so far. Depending on the mass of a star, this main sequence phase could last anywhere from a couple million years to several billion years. As the main sequence star glows, the hydrogen within its core is converted into helium in a process called nuclear fusion. By forming these higher elements on the periodic table, a massive amount of energy is released. And when a star's hydrogen supply in its core begins to run out, the star can no longer generate heat via nuclear fusion, causing the core to become unstable and contract. Simultaneously, the outer shell of the star that is still mainly hydrogen starts to expand. During this expansion, the main sequence star cools and glows a deep red causing our star to enter the red giant phase. During this phase, the star's helium core will continue to fuse into heavier elements, eventually stopping at carbon. As internal nuclear reactions come to a halt, the star begins to contract inwards. This process of contraction can sometimes heat up the star's outer layers of hydrogen, triggering nuclear fusion again temporarily in a phenomenon that makes red giants periodically pulsate and expand in size for a brief time in the star's life. As the star becomes increasingly unstable, the red giant will eventually expel its outer layers completely, creating an expanding cloud of dust and gas that surrounds the core of the former red giant. This forms what is known as a planetary nebula, with the dense carbon core remaining at the center of the planetary nebula, now being called a white dwarf. With no more nuclear fusion reactions able to take place within a white dwarf star, what little heat the stellar remnant had left over from its fiery past will be dispersed, 
as the white dwarf cools down over hundreds of billions of years. Eventually, as all white dwarf stars are hypothesized to, it will become the background temperature of the universe, entering the final phase of a low mass star's life cycle, becoming a black dwarf. However, because this process is thought to take billions upon billions of years, it is believed that there are no black dwarfs in existence yet. Now on to the other path that high mass stars may take following the Titari star phase. Following a similar yet shorter and more extreme path than low mass stars follow, high mass stars also undergo nuclear fusion. However, instead of stopping at carbon within their cores, high mass stars fuse together heavier elements all the way to iron. Due to how massive these stars are though, this entire process only takes a few million years. With each fusion of a heavier element, the amount of excess energy released from the process is less than the fusion before. And so although these massive stars normally would be able to fuse beyond iron, such a fusion requires energy instead of releasing an excess of energy, therefore quickly halting the process of nuclear fusion as the high mass star runs out of energy. With no more energy being produced to prevent the collapsing of the star's core, the star's iron core collapses until inner nuclear forces being collapsed in on force the star to rebound. This process creates a shock wave that results in the star exploding in what is known as a supernova. Now depending on how massive the star was at the time of the supernova explosion will result in one of two outcomes. If this collapsing stellar core at the center of a supernova contained between 1.4 and 3 solar masses, the collapse continues until electrons and protons combine to form neutrons, producing a neutron star. Neutron stars are incredibly dense objects found throughout our universe, with powerful gravitational and magnetic fields surrounding such masses. However, in perhaps the most magnificent chain of events possible in our universe, if the collapsed stellar core happened to be larger than three solar masses, the core collapses completely to form a black hole, an infinitely dense object whose gravity is so strong that nothing can escape its event horizon, not even light. This renders black holes as invisible objects that can only be detected via the effects it has on nearby material, forming an accretion disk of superheated swirling matter that can be spun around a black hole, in some instances, nearly at the speed of light. As literal holes in the fabric of space-time and our understanding of the cosmos, there is no result more extreme than this for a star. What remains from the dust and debris of supernovae and planetary nebulae forms the molecular clouds and stellar nurseries that will build the next generation of stars. And thus, the life cycle of stars will begin all over again until there is no more matter left to form more stars as the accelerating expansion of the cosmos will eventually leave insufficient clumps of matter for star formation. But until that day, look up at the starry night sky and enjoy the wonders and beauty of the stars above, as one day there won't be anything to see at all. But we'll leave that for another video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell on. To learn more about star formation, see the links to the research I used for this video in the description. If there are other ideas you'd like to see covered in a future video, please leave it in the comments below. Have a great day everyone, and remember to stay curious.